Hello. Let's uh, let's uh, take a trip down the road of uh, sanity instead of insanity for a minute. Now, there are two competing pictures of reality. Okay. There is the uh, the uh, non-reality, the fantasy land of unicorn farts and pixie dust and leprechauns as enjoined by quantum mechanics and uh, the idiots of uh, GR, general relativity, and the cult of Einstein. Okay, well, it's kind of like any sick cult, you know, like you've got, uh, you know, strange cults teaching garbage like Lord Zenu and all sorts of, you know, just... This idiotic nonsense, and we have to admit that, uh, you know, people in general are not that wise. They may be intelligent, but they have no wisdom. It was Nikola Tesla, the guy that gave you everything, by the way, um, who said that uh, you can think very deeply and yet be insane. Um, it is a far more difficult, this is a summary of what he said, it's far more difficult or rare to uh, think uh, clearly. You can be a deep thinker and yet be an insane thinker. And uh, Nikola Tesla was right on this. The two competing pictures of reality, the one of insanity, of uh, quantum mechanics, which uh, teaches that Mother Nature is like a, uh, a hooker on crack, uh, covered in uh, body glitter with a, a calculator that does math, which is absolutely insane. Or a really, really simple picture of the universe that revolves around two principles. It's the conjugate nature of reality. You have uh, force and motion, and you have inertia and acceleration. Obviously, there is no uh, force involved in something accelerating from a standing point. I say, well, that's gravity. Okay, well, we call that gravity. What if we were to travel to the other side of the universe and ask a really advanced race of uh, intelligent beings... So why are you calling it something separate? I mean, that which you call magnetic attraction is no different than gravity. The only difference is one is coherent and the other is incoherent. It's like, oh, God, what a revelation that is. You know, Mother Nature is not, is not complex. She's very simple. It is not simplex, but it is simple. And it is definitely not complex. There is nothing more convoluted and irrational and nonsensical than quantum mechanics. These people, to make their own equations balance out, by their own admission, and I'll quote them here in a second, uh, conjure up nonsense that is no different than unicorns and leprechauns. Let's take, for example, uh, Feynman and others have declared in his book, QED, Strange Theory of Light and Matter, that magnetism is medi mediated by virtual photons. This is no different than uh, the Pope, for example, uh, declaring that uh, Mother Mary, you know, healed some sick child. You know, uh, this is insanity. Let me quote them, for example. So taking a cue from quantum uh, mysticism, which is what I refer to, then we ask the expert, the relativist, the idiot involved in quantum mechanics. And by the way, the people that hurl the most abusive, you know, uh, slurs and curses and say the most vile crap on my YouTube channel, uh, especially when I make uh, these videos on uh, field theory, they are all in the cult of quantum. I mean, they say the most vile, disgusting, trashy, filthy garbage you could imagine. I mean, it is a frigging religion. It is a cult. It is a sick religion. Um, so let's uh, refer to them. If you actually dig deeply into their stuff, which I do and nobody else does, uh, taking a cue from quantum mysticism, um, if you ask them what a virtual particle is, they'll say, yes, a virtual particle is an abstraction which facilitates in calculation and understanding. The term is very vague and loosely defined. It never appears as the inputs or outputs of any experiments. Their existence is questionable at best. However, they are very useful in rendering concepts and making equations balance out. Well, that is reductively no different than saying angels did it. Not one degree of difference exists between those two things. You can say virtual photons, you can say angels. And so far as their descriptions and using those things to make equations balance out, there's no difference. It, it's just absolute stupid. It's insanity. It's nonsense. These virtual particles are quantum ghosts. They, they talk about the speed of light and the notion of a warped space-time. Well, time is a measure. It has no existence autonomous from motion. It is a a measure of magnitudes and their vectors over a given period time. Time has no existence. What about space? Well, space, 
Poincaré disk model. Space is nothing other than the after effect of the loss of inertia. It has translated into force in motion. Here we have inertia. And here we have force in motion. Oh, the hollow part of this toroid would be space. But it is nothing. It is nothing. It is the after effect. It is the bubble. Space has no properties. Aristotle said this. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton said this. Nikola Tesla said this. Space has no properties. The notion that space has properties or that space on acts on one thing or the other is an absurdity. The notion of a speed of light. You know, light has no speed. It's a rate of induction of a transverse phenomena over a given period of time. You know, the very principle that a match or this light bulb, you know, emits light. It doesn't emit anything, of course. At the same speed as the sun, you know, a, a super gigantic uh, fusion reactor is ridiculous. You know, strike a match, uh, light is emitted at the same speed as uh, from the sun. Well, that makes no sense. Oh, what does make sense is that it is a field perturbation. It is an ether perturbation. The notion that uh, this light bulb or match or the sun is actually emitting something is an absurdity. If there's nothing in the whole universe other than this light bulb and you plug it into some unknown socket, do you think that anything is being emitted from this light bulb? No, it is a field perturbation. If someone is in the middle of a lake and flapping their arms and the water is splashing everywhere, do you think that... You know, and the waves actually lap up against your feet along the shore. Do you actually think that the person is actually reaching out and touching your feet? That, you know, they're emitting something? No, they're not. It is a perturbation in the water that they're flapping their arms in. It's the same thing with this light bulb and everything else. Light is not emitted from this light bulb any more than it is emitted from a match or the sun. You know, think about that the next time you're on the highway or something, you see uh, spotlights or something, somebody else's car headlights you know, shining it. You think that that is emitting light? It's a field perturbation. Like, stick this in an absolute vacuum, which humans cannot recreate, which basically does not exist, and uh, light will manifest. I pump a charge through this, a discharge occurs. That discharge is like someone flapping their arms in the middle of a, a pond or a lake. It's a field perturbation. The Michelson-Morley experiment never disproved the ether. It did not. Nobody can disprove the ether. Because everything is fields, and fields are not particles. Let me actually quote Nikola Tesla here in a little bit. Um, uh, James Clerk Maxwell, This medium of propagation, the ether, must exist. The medium must be a predominant thought in our investigations. Okay, there are only two possibilities, a medium, i.e. ether or inertia, or nothing, i.e. space. You know, and nothing acts on nothing. Nihil ex nihilo. The notion that space has properties or space that uh, acts on something or does something is an absolute brain fart and sanity of quantum mechanics and general relativity. Space is nothing. It is a privation. It is like saying a shadow acts upon things. Well, you sit in a shadow, it makes you cold. Therefore, a shadow does... No, you cannot reify an attribute. You can't reify an absence. You know, it's like saying, well... Someone died because they're in the middle of the desert and there was no food. Therefore, uh, no food acted to kill the person. You know, that's also ludicrous. You can't say a privation killed somebody. You can't say it did something to somebody. You can't say that space, which is a privation, actually did something or acted upon something else. You can't reify absence. Uh, yeah, it's Nikola Tesla's quote. Scientists today think rather clearly. One must be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and be quite insane. Today, scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments, and they wander through equation after equation and eventually build a structure which has no basis in reality. Nikola Tesla. Here's someone else uh, quoting you about uh, the cult of uh, quantum mysticism. You can always recognize a relativist. They will either ask you for your credentials or offer their credentials without you asking for them or about them. Nothing is more fantastical and a travesty of how nature works than is quantum theory. Its very basis has no relationship to reality. That was uh, Walter Russell. Here's quoting the actual uh, priests of the cult of quantum. These are the priests of the cult of quantum, and it is a cult. It's a religion. It's a, it's a damn religion. You think it's science, and they think it's science, and they will have you believe that it's science, but it's not science. It's a religion. 
Where common sense and intuition fail, meaning these insane relativists, we had to create a new form of intuition based upon abstract, unreal mathematics. When common sense fails, we must create uncommon sense. That was Leonard Susskind, professor of theoretical physics and priest of the cult of quantum. Well, that's the definition of insanity. That's the sort of crap they stick you in a padded room for. Hmm. Here's another statement from Niels Bohr, another uh, co-creator of the cult of quantum. Everything we call real is made up of things that cannot be real. Oh, okay. Here's another priest of the cult of quantum, one of the most insane morons that ever existed. He is praised endlessly. He has a cult following around this uh, demented devil more than anything you can imagine. Richard Feynman. The more you see how strange nature behaves, the harder it is for us to make a model that explains how even the most simple phenomena work. Theoretical physics has given up on this pursuit. Here's Feynman again. Uh, he says something in effect. He says that uh, the more you study uh, the, uh, the more you study uh, quantum mechanics, the more uh, you can uh, not understand it. Anybody says that they understand uh, quantum mechanics uh, is a liar. He even says his own religion is just uh, you know a, a sick farce, and that's exactly what it is. These people are uh, granted money to go uh, off looking in particle accelerators for unicorn farts. You know, give me a two-year grant and ten million dollars, and I'm going to go looking for the the uh, Omicron particle, which, you know, my math says it exists. If you look at my math, well, nobody can understand the math. It's just a pile of bullshit. Which, by the way, they, they plug in these imaginary angels, i.e. Uh, virtual photons, to make their equations balance out. All literature on this subject, i.e. relativity and curved space-time, is futile and destined to oblivion. Nikola Tesla. Let's take a look at uh, a few quotes from Nikola Tesla about Einstein and relativity. Einstein is a beggar wrapped in purple robes whom ignorant people take for a king. The theory, he said, warps, uh, wraps all these errors and fallacies and clothes, uh, clothes them in a magnificent mathematical garb which fascinates, dazzles, and makes people blind to the underlying errors. The theory is like a beggar uh, clothed in purple whom ignorant people take for a king. Its uh, exponents are uh, very brilliant men but they are metaphysicists rather than scientists. Not a single one of uh, the relative, uh, the propositions of relativity have been proved. And that still remains true, even through the gravity wave nonsense, which was not proven. It's a farce. Um, to say that in the presence of large bodies, space becomes quir curved is equivalent to stating that something can act upon nothing. Nikola Tesla. My conclusions differ from Einstein's and to that extent disprove Einstein's theory. My explanations of natural phenomena are not so convoluted as his. They are simpler and when I am ready to make full an announcement it will be seen that I have proven my conclusions. And Tesla said of the theory of relativity, a mass of error and deceptive ideas violently opposed to the teachings of great men of scientists of the past and even to common sense. The scientists from Franklin to Morse were clear thinkers that did not produce such erroneous theories as relativity. Nikola Tesla. Um, my followers are strong of mind and I am content to stay behind. Nikola Tesla. Uh, here's a little poem that Nikola Tesla did. Uh, my, uh, yeah, too, too bad, Sir Isaac, they dimmed your renown and turned your great science upside down. Now a long-haired crank, Einstein by name, puts on your high teachings as to blame. He says, matter and force are transmutable and wrong, the laws you thought immutable. I am much too ignorant, my son, for grasping crazy schemes so finely spun. That was Nikola Tesla just uh, hurling a giant pile of poo in the face of, uh, of uh, Isaac, New I mean, excuse me, uh, Einstein. So, anyway, there, there are two competing uh, views of reality. You know, you can either think that Mother Nature is an insane crack core covered in uh, body glitter with a calculator that does math, or, uh, you know, she's a really simple uh, forest child that, uh, you know, goes around in a pullover tunic, and she only understands two things, force and motion, and inertia and acceleration. And the entire universe is just that simple. You know, you have uh, capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. Uh, everything in the universe is actually very, very uh, simple. It's not simplex, but it is very simple. You know, force and motion and inertia and acceleration. That's all that needs to be understood. That is the conjugate nature of the universe. Uh, things get extremely uh, complicated when you compound these things upon each other. 
But the underlying principles of uh, field mechanics is very, very simple. There's only one field. Uh, the notion that us stupid human beings are trying to unify, you know, uh, these uh, forces and fields together is ludicrous. It is, is insane to someone of great wisdom as someone trying to unify steam and uh, ice and uh, water. It's all water. Now we're trying to unify them. No, no, asshole. It is all water. Steam and ice, water, it's all the same damn thing. They are all field modalities. There's only one field and three field modalities. There's inertia, there's a loss of that inertia, and there are two modalities. Electricity is phi times psi equals Q in a plank of electrification. Electricity is a hybrid of a dielectricity and magnetism. And that which we call gravity is no different than dielectric acceleration, or what we call magnetic attraction. Now, magnetism is a field divergence. The notion that a uh, radiation is attractive is ludicrous. But everything in Mother Nature is curved linear. There's not a single straight line in the universe, as you can see from this hypertrochoidal formation that forms the torus. You can actually see the curved linear pattern that goes from one side to the other in a curved linear motion. And if you look right over top of it, you'll see a hypertrochoid, just like you do over top of a feral cell. Very, very simple. Inertia, the loss of inertia. Force in motion, inertia and acceleration. The universe is literally that simple. You know, Mother Nature is not, you know, a crazy witch with a calculator, as quantum mechanics and relativity would have you believe. It, it's not that difficult. Now, the universe is incredibly complex, but that's only because you have one structure overlying another structure meshed with another structure, but the simplicity behind all of it is divinely simple. It couldn't even be more simple. I mean, it, it's, it's impossible to even imagine something more simple than that. And here we are running around like morons trying to unify what was already unified. We're complicating things that are not complicated by very principle. And that's just because we're stupid humans. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later. Bye.